Throughout history, our scientists have found a large number of old artifacts, and while many of them provide us with information about what happened in the past, others raise more questions than they do answers. In recent years, numerous strange discoveries have been found, and a significant number of them continue to be cloaked in mystery. In today's video, we will look at strange archaeological finds and artifacts that experts are still unable to explain. Sphinx Head from the Ten Commandments In the furrows of the Guadalupe Nipomo dunes on the coast of California, a 300-pound sphinx waited for millennia, its unblinking eyes staring into the sand in an attempt to decipher what lay beneath. But this priceless artifact, which was found by archaeologists earlier this month and is in pristine condition despite its age, does not come from an old civilization. Instead, it was taken from a film set of the Ten Commandments, which was released in 1923 and directed by the great Cecile B. DeMille. It was a silent black and white epic that ran for a mind-numbingly long three hours. The movie, which was based on a public submission to a contest, was one of the most expensive ever created at the time and it held the revenue record at Paramount for a quarter of a century. It even caused a surge in the number of Bibles that were purchased. The construction of a costly and grandiose Egyptian set consumed the majority of the million-dollar budget, which is equivalent to almost $31 million in today's money. The gigantic temple gates in the Californian dunes soared more than 120 feet above the sand like a mirage, and they were flanked by 21 sphinxes and epic statues of Ramses II. Nevertheless, just like the renowned Library of Alexandria, it was eventually demolished. But that wasn't the case. Too expensive to move and too valuable to allow it to be poached by cinematic rivals, the 800-foot white set was buried. A clue to its fate appears in DeMille's autobiography from 1959. If 1,000 years from now, archaeologists happen to dig beneath the sands of Guadalupe, he wrote. I hope they will not rush into print with the amazing news that Egyptian civilization, far from being confined to the Valley of the Nile. To this point, we have only managed to restore a portion. Doug Jansen, the executive director of the Dune Center, said in a statement that this most recent find is unique in comparison to anything uncovered in previous excavations. The sand had managed to preserve the vibrant colors of the Sphinx. We're still learning unexpected aspects to film historical movie production, such as the fact that objects in black and white films were painted extremely intense colors. Even archaeologists from Allied Earthworks used the film as a reference point while doing their work. These remarkable artifacts are largely composed of plaster of Paris and have been preserved thanks to the natural drainage of the dune where they were discovered. Otherwise, according to Jensen, the set would turn to mush. Each individual excavation needs its dig permit and the overall cost per project is a whopping $135,000. The funding for these projects comes from a combination of charitable individuals and government institutions. The construction of the lost city of DeMille was extremely expensive, and the process of recovering it has proven to be just as pricey. La Brea Woman The skeletal remains of a human being known as La Brea Woman were discovered in La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, California in the United States. The remains, which are fragments of a woman's skeleton, were found in the pits for the first time in 1914. She was between the ages of 18 and 25 when she passed away, and her burial has been dated to between 10,220 and 10,250 years before the present. These skeletal fragments are the only ones of human nature that have ever been found in the La Brea Tar Pits. According to the estimates provided by the researchers, the deceased woman was between the ages of 18 and 25 years old and stood between 4 feet 8 and 10 inches tall or 1.5 meters. The remains found in her teeth give researchers reason to believe that she subsisted on a diet of the stone ground meal. The researchers believe that she received a blow to the head, which resulted in the fracture of her skull and may have been the cause of her death. The remains, which included a cranium, a mandible, a postcranial fragments, were found in Pit 10 of the Rancho La Brea Tar Pits. The pit was named of the ranch where the tar pits are located. These were exhibited in the George C. Page Museum beside a life-size replica that was thought to resemble the woman. However, the exhibit was taken down around the year 2004. The curator, John M. Harris, was afraid that the display of historical remains may insult native people or attract unwelcome attention to its Native American roots, which could then spark demand for the remains to be returned. The shape of her skull, according to the findings of some specialists, suggests that she's of the Chumash ancestry. On the other hand, many believe that this hypothesis is groundless and that there is not sufficient evidence to conclusively establish this. 
A facial reconstruction was constructed by Melissa R. Cooper, a forensic artist from California in 2009. The reconstruction was based on Cooper's skull. In addition to raising ethical concerns about the museum's motivations for keeping La Brea woman hidden, the photographs sparked a debate over whether or not they should have been displayed publicly. Mystery Humans Scientists now estimate that between 12,000 and 20,000 years ago, many waves of people traveled from Asia to the Americas. Some may have paddled their way through Beringia or the Bering Land Bridge, while others may have navigated the rich coastal ecosystems by nose. After global warming caused by the ice sheets covering much of Canada and the northern United States to melt, some people may have walked the majority of the distance. According to the scientists, the discovery of the Ceruti Mastodon does not alter this interpretation. This merely adds another group of pioneers to the mix, this time 100,000 years in the past. At least in terms of the weather, the time seems appropriate. The coastal path would have been mostly ice-free around 130,000 years ago, allowing people to gather food as they slowly made their way from Asia to the Americas. As recently as the late Pleistocene, it is even plausible that Berentia might have been passable on foot. The big question is, which group of hominins had the wherewithal to settle Berentia and keep the population going? There were likely many populations in mainland Asia at the time, including Denisovans, Neanderthals, and possibly even more ancient ones that we have yet to discover. Because if they did, we would expect to find a hundred millennia's worth of abandoned implements and mutilated animal bones. We've been forced to assume they didn't get to North America. Holin and his co-workers concur with Hawks and most of his points. They speculate in their paper that the Californians who left behind stone tools could have been either Neanderthals or Denisovans. They agreed that it was more likely that these people were in a chimera or different species of early humans, including a form of early Homo sapiens that roamed Asia around 200,000 years ago. Human remains from before 180,000 years ago have been found on islands off the coast of Indonesia that could only have been accessed by boat. This means that Asians have both humans and boat technology. The weather in the Americas is suitable for their arrival. Taking this information at face value, we're still left wondering what become of the earliest Americans and why we haven't uncovered more of their broken pottery and skeletal remains. Colin hypothesizes that these early hunters of mastodons existed in small, widely distributed groups. Population levels were low. Moreover, he added, it's possible that the early population came in and did not make it. Humans could become locally extinct if the environment wasn't favorable for human adaptation in that area. This means that we might never find many of these people's tools because there were so few of them or because they died out before leaving much behind. Paleontologist Thomas Demaray, who collaborated with Holland, thinks these people had a fantastic life along the California coast when they were alive. Ceruti Mastodon site was a meandering stream close to sea level. It was occupied by Ice Age mammals including camels, horses, ground sloths, dire wolves, deer, and capybara. It was very nice, I would think, not far from the coastline, he said. As scientists continue to find more evidence and search for more signs of these ancient Americans, we're left with a startling new vista on an alternate history that might just turn out to be our own. And that's all for the video. We will be right back with more such content. Until then, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.